Hello everybody, this is Boaz Fader. I'm here with a weekly evolutionary astrology forecast from Monday the 22nd until Monday the 28th and we will be talking about the new moon on the 29th, we must. And I want to thank everybody that sent me emails or messages and I've missed you all as well and here I am with a weekly forecast. So, Monday the 21st we have the moon in Virgo squaring the sun. That could be a time in which we feel a conflict between our entrepreneurship, creative side, our masculine side, to our introverted, sensitive, emotional part, our feminine part. And this could be a time that we can experience conflict also between males and females in our lives. How can we elevate that and, and ease it? We could be less perfectionistic, less critical of ourselves and of others and understand that we are one part of a very long chain and we need to make sure that we do our part the best way possible and let everything else go. From the afternoon onwards, that's early morning time in America, early afternoon and early afternoon in Europe, the moon is going to go on the North Node. It's a time with a lot of intuition. It's a time that is great to be in a family or um, in, a, in a home environment and really take care, clean up, and, and, and set things straight and heal things in those environments. The Sun is going to be opposing Neptune on the 23rd, I'm sorry, on the 22nd. The, sun is, uh, the Moon is opposing Neptune on the 22nd. That's a time that A, our um, imagination is over uh, is really heightened it's 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 activated in a very um in a very strong way and that could make us all feel that we're a bit of an astronauts that we're not in tempo with daily life with the reality on the ground that we are a bit of an outsider that's a very good day for anything that is artistic or spiritual it's not such a good day for work related environments because again, we could feel out of time and space and things could be unclear. We are also extra sensitive at this time. So, at later on in the evening time, Europe, that's uh, noontime onwards, it's going to be opposing Chiron again, a very sensitive time and it's going to square Saturn and Mercury. That means that especially with work-related environments, we really have to watch what we say and how we say it. And, and, and especially when it comes to dominant fingers figures in our lives so that could be either in a work-related environment or in our life in general be careful from arguments or any kind of problems with um, dominant figures on the 22nd Mercury and Saturn are conjunct in the sky and that conjunction is at its height on the 23rd and when this, the star, the, sorry, when the planet that is in charge of navigation and thoughts and words conjunct the old master, the wisdom of old, the judgment, the one that we cannot bull, what happens is that we could feel a little bit drawn from the crowd. We could feel a bit lonely. We could feel... Um, unsupported enough we could feel a bit shyer than usual and feel like if there's nothing good to say we should say nothing at all it's a feeling that everything we say and do needs to be backed up needs to be validated needs to be proven and practical and if we have not been so we could get exposed at this time and that's also on a public and political level of things we've said or done are not validated and cannot be trusted that could be exposed at this time but if they were validated and if they can be counted on this is a time that we can actually get a higher status we can get hegemony we could get to build a larger and more stable frame in which we could build our lives with all of that judgment we still have very uh, optimistic, adventurous influence coming in on the 22nd, which is that the sun is moving into Sagittarius. Happy birthday, all you Sagittarians. 
And that brings a really adventurous, optimistic, benevolent, out of your comfort zone and into the new kind of atmosphere. That's going to affect us all. And that's going to help us <coughs> um, really work towards our goals and our dreams. We need to make sure that we are not overly optimistic and that we do work for these goals and dreams on the ground of reality in a very practical way. And since the Sagittarian energy is building up in the sky, Mercury is already in Sagittarius, and now the Sun is going to come into Sagittarius. And Sagittarius has a side that could be very um, preaching. We can believe that our truth is the only truth and that we need to assert it. So whenever it comes to philosophical, political, um, or social arguments, we need to watch out not to become too heated and to spiral out of control. So, other than that, the moon is going to be void of course from 2 a.m. on the night of the 23rd, that's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, until 9 p.m. Central European Time of the 23rd, so it's almost all the 23rd, that's 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when it goes into Libra. And when the moon is in Libra on the 24th, it's going to be a beautiful day, especially for long-term relationships and anything we feel loyal to in our life. The, <clears throat> the moon is going to be sextiling the sun in Juno and then trining Mars and conjunct Jupiter. A lot of energy coming in and a lot of positivity coming in. And whenever the moon is conjunct Jupiter, there is a lot of feeling. The whole feely side of us is, expand, is expanding. And usually it's a very positive time with a lot of optimism. But feelings being the way they are could turn uh, in a second. So you could say that on that day we could be a little hormonal. We could laugh from anything, we could cry from anything, and we could be very much in touch with our feelings. Take it to the more nice melodramatic place and not the not so nice melodramatic place. Anyway, that Jupiter is going to be on the 24th also squaring Pluto exactly. And what Jupiter and that all Sagittarian energy really tries to tell us is, hey, walk the walk. Go and, and conquer your dreams. Step out of your skin into the new pool of the universe. Let yourself change. Let yourself expand. And what Pluto is saying is, hey buddy, before you actually make that leap forward, there are issues within you that previously prevented you from actually conquering your dreams that you need to deal with. There are things within us that needs addressing and changing within our unconsciousness, within our problematic emotional behavior that stems from post-trauma in our past that we need to address and transmute before we could actually really expand and go forward. So we could feel that, um, you know, that pendulum between these two sides. And the good thing, the positive thing would be to have them in a balanced way, have both these influences in, in a balanced way. Wanting to go forward, aiming to go forward, and addressing the things within us that actually need changing so we can actually make that change last, that leap of faith last in our life. If you are in the United States on the 24th, the, the moon is going to be squaring Venus and Pluto. It's a sensitive time in relationships, so just make sure you don't let the drama rule. On the 25th, in the morning time, in Europe, the moon is still conjunct Jupiter, a lot of good vibes, as I said. But from early noon time, it's already opposing Uranus, and that's a time that we have a much shorter fuse, and we want to stick out from the crowd, and we want to rebel, and not always for the best reasons. We need to exercise a lot of caution, and um, just our logic mind should be in charge of things. From... Uh, 1500 hours the moon is going to be void of course until 9 a.m. the next morning that's from 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time 
Venus is reaching the height of its conjunction with Pluto at that day on the 26th. I'm sorry, on the 25th. And that's a time that uh, how we um, address relationships and love and satisfaction and money could fluctuate, could change dramatically. And we could feel that we want things now. We need to validate them. We need to feel alive. And how do we feel alive? We feel alive by going to extremes, by wanting intense, um, intense uh, situations. And that could get us into a situation in which we feel very sensual or very sexual and that could be a positive thing for us in our lives if we, we know how to control it. And it can really heighten the drama and makes us, make us challenge our relationships, challenge the way we reach satisfaction or the people we love in order to authenticate what we have in our life and feel that we are worth it, feel that it is true in a sense, and we need to watch that. We need to watch that scorpionic side with Venus at that time. So that could create moments that could be a great anchor for authenticity and intimacy or experiences that could actually separate us and make us even cruel. So let's not take it to that side. On the 26th, the Sun conjuncts Juno during the next couple of days. These are great days for anything we feel uh, that we are loyal to in our lives or for long-term relationships, whether they be intimate ones or uh, impersonal ones, work-related ones. And the Moon is going to be beautifully aspected to the nodes on that day as well. That's just a great time to express yourself emotionally and to feel emotionally serene. The moon is void, of course, on the 27th from the 11 p.m. on the 27th until 10.45 p.m. I'm sorry, 9.45 p.m. on the 28th, Central European time. That's 5 p.m. of the 27th until... 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. When it goes into Sagittarius, bringing more Sagittarian energy in. And even though the moon is void, of course, on the morning of the 28th, it could be a little stressful because it's conjunct Lilith, Queen Conxus Uranus. That's a time that we could act in an emotional pattern that is not beneficial for us in our life. We need to watch that again. The end of the month, the 29th, brings a new start the new moon in Sagittarius, this is a great time for reflection. This is a great time to bridge the gap as much as possible between our ideals and morals and what we believe to be true and right and the way we actually do things and the way we actually live our life and trying to really bring the two to be one. Other than that, on the 25th, the moon is going to be with uh, an aspect to Pluto, that's a day that we need to watch our emotions and our desires as well. I want to thank you for listening. Of course, I'd love to see your comments or answer your questions, and I'd love you to share this video. And if you're in need for a private consultation or want to study evolutionary astrology, here I am. This is Boaz Fighter. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.